The next dungeon that we're going to be exploring in our 100% walkthrough of Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD for the Nintendo Switch. Oh no, no, stop, 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 stop. That That's the animation that I play when I do the next thing. Fine, I'll just reuse the same content. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Legend of Zelda 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John Plays of the YouTube channel Austin John Plays. And yeah, that's me wearing the shirt that has my name and I'm not showing my face and there's my face and now we're back to the game. Great! In our last episode, we did a whole bunch of side quests in the sand ship and, and then it brought me into the sand ship and then I had a horrible segue and here we are. Great. <laughs> Alright, so this is a giant boat, right? And in this giant boat, there's a whole bunch of stuff we have to do. And actually the boat's not that big, but the simple fact that it's it goes between two different points in time, it, it's essentially twice the ship and there's four floors. First thing I want to do is get us the bow and arrow. And then after we get the bow and arrow, we have some stuff we have to do, okay? We're gonna enter the only door that we can. There's going to be a stool here and a save bird. So you can use the stool if you're low on hearts from all the exploring that we did, and you could use the burb statue to save your game. Great. I do have good news. I know that we did a whole bunch of stuff in the last episode, and this dungeon is not that long, like at all, so don't worry. Over here, we have access to a goddess wall. Uh, my my Joy-Con did not do a very good job responding to the thing that I wanted it to do. From where we drew on the wall, we are gonna head down this corridor. There's gonna be a big old sand thing in the middle with a red ruby. Isn't that so sweet? And then we're gonna backtrack. And we're going to go down the only other corridor. And there's a door right here on the left, which we are going to enter. Inside of here, take care of the sand frog. Run across the sand. Continue down the corridor, because we cannot enter any of the doors yet. Go down the stairs again. And through the single door. Take care of all of these. Hope you need some monster jelly, because I, I got some good news for you. There's a lot of monster jelly potential here. You're then going to see another save bird. And Fee is going to say, hey, look. It's definitely the boss room, and we're still just gonna head down the only hallway that we can. Simple as that. Over here, you're gonna be in the brig, and you have to uncover the floor. The floor has hints as to how we're going to be making our way into the next room. And if you look at the top of all of these wheels, they have a certain amount of orange pegs that tells you the order. If we see that the first one is gonna be down, Second one is up, third one is down, fourth one is right. So down, up, down, right. And we're going to see the same lock. Down, up, down, right. That will then unlock the door. And inside of here is a small key. Now you are going to backtrack all the way back upstairs to that locked door by the first bird statue. Got it? Making all the way back up, there's going to be a bird statue. I highly recommend using the bird statue. And now we're going to unlock this door for, hands down, the most memorable mini boss of the entire game. His name is Skurvo. And he's a sword wielding pirate that you are going to be fighting on the top of, on the, the forward of this ship. You're going to start the battle off by running directly at him. And now you want to attack and make sure you dodge or shield. If you're playing without a shield, it's going to be more difficult because you can parry his dash attacks and get some distance on him. You cannot defeat him. Instead, what you have to do is hit him back all the way off of this plank. Then, once he's all the way at the end, he's going to slash at you. The back door is going to come forward, and you're going to repeat. But now it's a smaller playing field, and now more dangerous. His attacks are going to be doubled up. Ow. And they're also going to be electrified. After his attack, sometimes he's off balance, and that's your time to strike. Ow. Again, patience. Look for your opportunity, and get your right amount of attacks in. He's then going to break his arm, and now his torso is going to rotate. 
This is the third and final phase of this mini boss fight. Run forward, and it's a much smaller path to fight on. That does not mean it's easier, because he's deflecting all my attacks here. I think he's guaranteed to deflect your first attack with that uh, hook hand. But, then you knock him into the sand sea, he is defeated. Also, I want to point something out. He was, he was a mech, right? Every other mech has been rusted away by the ages, but not him. That pirate was described as a captain. I can't help but admire the tenacity he has displayed in staying alive and functional all these years. Yeah, that's what I just said, except, you know, you said it like a heartless robot. Thanks, Fee. Anyways, now we have the bone arrow. Isn't that so sweet? They do a lot more damage than Deku seeds. That's for real. Fee is letting us know that we could shoot certain devices to activate them. Thanks. That's kind of what we've been doing for, I would say, all of the entire game since we got the slingshot. Now that we are back at the main room, we kind of had an option on what we wanted to do. And I'm going to make a quick pit stop at Skyloft because we can upgrade our bow. We could buy a larger quiver. We can upgrade our bow again. We can upgrade the quiver two times. In addition, there is a chest on Skyloft that contains a piece of heart, a goddess chest that we just unlocked. And on the boat is going to be the 16th piece of heart. So we're going to be able to complete a full heart. By the way, the list of things that you need in order to upgrade your bow two times and quiver two times is eight tumbleweeds. We already did a whole bunch of farming. Three lizard tails. You should have a bunch. You should have at least four just from the four that we fought recently. Two Elden Ore. You should have at least two. Five Amber Relics. We've been picking them up all the time. Six Dusk Relics. You should have a bunch. Three Monster Claws. You should be fine. Five Monster Horns. That's exactly how many you should have before finding a Bokoblin and stealing his horns. Three Evil Crystals. One Golden Skull and two Goddess Plumes. In order to get the goddess chest that's on Skyloft, we are going to go to the waterfall and we're going to climb the waterfall once again. I'm also leaving to go get these things, these upgrades, because I have literally the perfect amount of items and I feel like the game designed it that way. You know what I mean? And boom, piece of heart. There is a chance that you don't have a, a full piece of heart by getting that one. The difference is I already bought the one from Beetle. Some people like to wait until later in the game to buy the one from Beetle, either because of rupee constraints or because of the fact that he gives you a discount after you do a quest for him later. Hello, p hello, darling, Patrice, my love. I'm not using bombs at all right now. So let's get rid of my bombs and let's go ahead and grab this quiver. Now, again, you don't need to buy a quiver right now because you're going to get a quiver from a goddess chest, just like we did for the other items. But again, I like to do everything as early and optimized as possible. The bow, three tumbleweeds, one evil crystal, three monster claw, two Eldenor. The first upgrade increases the attack power and now you can shoot further, which is awesome. And we're going to upgrade it again for five tumbleweeds, two crystals, three tails and one plume. And all it says is it uses sacred power of the goddess to rain a terrible force upon your enemies. Thanks for being super vague as to the upgrade. The quiver is going to hold five additional for three horns, three relics and five regular relics. And the final upgrade, two horns, three relics, one golden skull and one goddess plume. And with that, boom, large quiver. You could just fast travel me to the sand ship. Thanks, Skipper. Now that we have the bow and arrow, if we look at the main mast of the ship, you're going to see that there's this little target right here. If we hit that, that's going to raise a time crystal in the middle of the ship. After we hit the time crystal, the ship is now inside of water. Sails come down. But this Bokoblin's now back to life, and he's going to lock the time crystal. Oh no, now we're stuck in current time. While we're down here, uh, you can actually snipe out a bunch of these guys. And chances are, whenever you hit a sniper, you're going to get a bindle of arrows. I believe a, a group of arrows is a bindle. But now that we're in current times, all of the barbed wire is gone. We could climb up the rear of the ship. And this guy right here has a monster horn. This is actually one of the very few times that you're going to have farmable monster horns. And after we go through that door, which is later in the level, we're going to be able to just go back and forth and back and forth and farm as many of these horns as we need. There's also going to be a life raft here. We're going to shoot the eye of the life raft. 
You're gonna find out why later. And back on the main sail, we're going to be climbing all the way up. Once up here, look around, make sure there's no bokoblins left. And as long as there aren't, you should be good. Let's run over to the side. You're going to see a target all the way over there. We're going to be shooting that. And that's going to be bringing a zip line down to us. We're going to zip line up to the forward of the ship. We're going to repeat the same thing to raise up one more time. Also, feel free to take care of this bow goblin now. We Once on top of the middle, we're going to stab this, turn it back, and activate it so that we can easily turn the ship between current time and past time whenever we want. That's also going to open up the gate at the bottom. Hey, Skipper's here. He's going to inform us that his crew is in the brig of the ship. And before we hop down, we have one more thing that we want to do. Let's go ahead and pull up the zip line going to the rear of the ship. Once on here, you can clearly see that there's going to be a claw shot target. I think we can reach it from here. No, we have to jump down. OK, let's hop down. Claw shot target. Just hit the let go button. And we're going to sail all the way down. This is going to lead us to a goddess wall. Oh, you can now also draw arrows. But again, really want to go for the Triforce here. We're doing good. We're doing real good. Oh, it's getting sloppy. Why is it getting sloppy halfway through? Oh, no. So how were those bombs? How did that register as bombs? <laughs> Anyways, there's a chest here with a piece of heart. Make sure you get it. If you didn't buy the one from Beetle, then that is going to be your completion for your 16th heart. And now we're just going to claw shot all the way back up. These barrels in the back have a fairy. I currently can't access my pouch, so it's not helpful to me. And now we're going to backtrack once again to the main deck of the ship. And we are going to be going through the doors that we first went through when we got onto the boat. The difference is now we are in current times. From the crest of Leneru, we're going to go right and up this hallway through once again the only door. This room is now much different. Instead of a sand frog, there's now two electric vocablins. And you're going to see an open door and a closed door. Inside of the open door is another electric vocablin and a skylight. Pretty luxurious ship with a bit skylight that big. And if you look through the skylight, you can see direct access to the time stone. We're gonna hit it like we're Doctor Strange. And now we can walk through here and collect this chest. And this is the dungeon map. Now we can just simply grab on top of here to open up this door. Now without changing the time again, we're gonna run across the sand where the sand frog is. And you're gonna be seeing this fan. Now this fan on the other side is going to be a target. We're going to shoot that. That's now going to unlock this door and we're going to enter. Amber Relic, Monster Horn. Let's head up here. We're going to pull this away. That way we get a clear view. When standing on this, the target becomes visible. You should have a clean shot to the target on the other side. I said a clean shot to the target on the other side. Nice. Now we're gonna head back out to the corridor. We're gonna run back over the sinky sand into the room on the left, back to the skylight, and we're going to once again shoot the time stone to put the boat into current times. With the doors that we just unlocked, that remains true through through the... Am I calling it current and past when it's not? Like, when I say current, I'm thinking that the boat is alive. Am I just, just getting the two words swapped for the two different times on the boat? I think I might be. Anyways, we're going to bring the boat back to life. We're going to put our sword inside of there and we're going to turn it. That's now going to power the generators in the engine room. Very nice. B is going to say, hey, we should definitely help the people in the brig. That's fine. Ignore what she says. Instead, do what I say. Back out in the corridor. We're going to go to the left room. There's some enemies in here. Take care of them right quick. You're going to see that there's an electric fence and you cannot progress through. So we're going to be taking this big old block, pulling it at least three times and then pushing it to the end. Now you're going to see that we have a passageway open and you're going to see the life raft there. We're going to go out on top of the life raft, shoot the target to bring the <laughs> life raft up. I'm laughing because the target was so very close. We're going to shoot the time stone and now we're going to bring the life raft back down. 
Alternatively, you could have ran up and down the ship. If, say, for example, you forgot to bring this down when I told you to. But, yeah. That's what we're going to do. And now that we're in this room with the generator, we're just going to be focusing up at the skylight and hitting the time stone once again. Once again, insert your sword, turn, and press inward. That is now two out of two generators online. If we make our way toward the exit, you're going to see that there's a pull-up bar that we're going to jump on and then go through the door. Sorry, getting a little burnt out here. We're going to go back to the corridor, turn left, and left again. We're going to go back into the room that we just came from. Well, we couldn't because, you know, all the zappy stuff is there. And the left window has stairs. We're going to go down these stairs. Wee. And inside, drop down. And welcome to the engine room. Welcome to the engine room. As soon as we enter, we're going to hop down. And you're going to see a classic Zelda, uh, classic Zelda crushy area. We're just going to run up to these guys. They can't really do too much. We're going to go up these stairs over here. Now, stop. Collaborate and listen. We're going to use the whip. We're going to turn right. We're going to get momentum. And then we're going to go into here. Because this, ladies and gentlemen, is the treasure room. With a monster horn, a silver rupee, an evil crystal, another silver rupee, and another evil crystal. We're going to assume that this wasn't the captain's treasure, but uh, the evil captain that we defeated before. Yeah. Anyways, back in the engine room, we're going to be able to just run straight forward, no problemo. Take out your whip, and we're going to swing on top. Once we're on top, we're going to wait for the one that we're on to be up and the one across from us to be down. Run forward. We're going to jump up to the pull-up bar, which is going to access as a shortcut going back, and we're going to enter into this small corridor. Exiting, there's going to be a short staircase and, once again, another pull-up bar. This is going to unlock the guys from the brig that the captain told us about. And he's like, whoa, you really came to save us. Oh, you came for Naru's flame? If you want to reveal Naru's flame, you're going to have to regain control of the ship. The control room is next to the brig, but it's the huge door and it's sealed shut. You'll need a key to open it. First, you should head to the captain's cabin. Thanks, guy. Please take this key. Well, thanks. That's exactly the thing that we needed. And on the main floor, that's the door that we're going to be going to. Neato. From here, we are going to backtrack straight through the shortcut that we activated with the pull-up bar and back outside. On the outside of the ship, we're gonna take that ladder back up and we're gonna go through the other window with our lifeboat once again. We're going to shoot the lifeboat with the bow and arrow. If you equip your whip, when you see this guy, you can steal his horn again. And actually, we're gonna use our small key on this door, right? Open the door, turn back around and go through the door that you just came through. And this guy, his horn will regenerate. And you could just repeat this over and over for the most effective monster horn farming in the entire game. Now this is the first time that we have a farming that's sort of in a very, very small time frame because after you beat the ship, the enemies are gone, of course, and this guy isn't gonna be here. So I wanna talk to you about something, okay? You and me, mano y mano. When you beat the game, you're given the option if you want to play in hero mode. Hero mode is gonna make it so hearts don't appear until you get a heart medal, which we've discussed. It also makes it so that enemies do double damage. However, you get to bring all of your treasures and bugs with you. So you can start the game with a huge amount of rupees and everything you need to upgrade everything, right? Right now I have five monster horns and by doing the math, which I have done extensively, you need a total of eight monster horns to upgrade every single item. However, uh, you only need three at the very beginning, and that's for a goddess shield, which isn't even really the beginning, and then you need five for the quivers. So you don't need to farm all of them up front, but while this is literally the fastest farming you're gonna do in the entire game, you might as well do it. Get eight, and then you never have to worry about it again. You don't have to worry about missing a treasure chest. You don't even have to watch my videos for you to do hero mode. Whatever you wanna do, you're gonna be fine, okay? But hey, for the, I, I think it's like less than 20 seconds for me to go and grab one of these, 
So what, it's gonna take me a minute and a half to get up to eight? Come on, you should do it too. After you've formed as many parts as you want, right? We're now gonna focus to the middle, and we're gonna be shooting the crystal to turn the boat into the old-timey boat, and we're gonna be heading through the door that we just came out of. At the bottom of the stairs, you're gonna be seeing the boss key, a few rusted bemos, there's gonna be a burb statue, and an entranceway. And then here, there's also going to be, oh, well, a bunch of these guys we should take care of right now. It's also gonna be a Beemos right in front of us, so that's a little dangerous. You're also gonna notice that we have a skylight and access to a Doctor Strange stone. Doing that is going to immediately resurrect the Beemos. He is much more of a priority than the Bokoblin right here. Uh, take care of the Beemos. And after you do, you can stand on this switch and focus at this target. That's then going to open up the door to the next room. And you see that Beemos right in front of us? Well, now we have another way to defeat the Beemos. It's an arrow to the eye. Nice. There are two more Beemos in the room. The one on the left you cannot see no matter what, but the one on the right we can definitely see. And you would much rather fight one Beemos than three or two. Good job. Run up quickly. Start with a spin attack. And defeat the Beemos. With all three of the Beemos defeated, the gate's going to open and the boss key is accessible. And we got the key! The squid carving. Yep, squid carving, homie. Well, fantastic. We are now pretty much all set for the boss. We know where the boss door is. And we have to go there. Hey, it's this guy again. Yoink. Mine. There is the door on the other side of the ship. The first door that we went through, we're going to be going through it again. And there's a bird statue. And a seat. I recommend taking advantage of both. And now we're just going to continue down the main corridor. The first way that we went and then the, <laughs> the second time that we went through here. All the way down to the boss door. Past the four rooms with the fan to the second save bird. There's also a Beemos here. Oh, and a seat. Great, you didn't even have to do that stuff up front. Nice. I already defeated the Beemos because I didn't need to be here. And uh, yeah, time to put in what looks like a Pac-Man ghost. <laughs> okay, that was just way too easy of a key. Link is gonna walk into a room and there's a whole bunch of tentacles in there. And you'd be like, WTF? And there's actually nothing to do in this room. This is actually considered the beginning of the boss fight. Now, what we need to do is make our way to the top of the ship, the same way that we came in. Oh no, there's some tentacles. And Fee says we should use the sacred power to defeat the tentacles. This boss fight, I mean, well, one, the setup is pretty awesome. Oh, watch out for the barrels, Donkey Kong's up there. The ship is starting to flood, we're going down. This boss battle is uh, a little decisive because some people say that it reminds them of a, uh, let's just say a Cernit character from a Cernit movie. There's tentacles, but it's not like a Kraken or anything. Instead, it's a very funny animated Kraken. Ooh, this rain looks so much better on the Switch version. It didn't even look like rain on the Wii version. It just, just looked like fog. That's a good looking scene right here. This is Tentalus. Tentalus' whole thing is that it has tentacles. That's pretty much it. So, whenever these come up, you're now going to be taking out your sword, and you're gonna be shooting, uh, chopping at them. You do want to do more of a, uh, a, a, a horizontal or a diagonal one than a vertical. Also, these have the chance to on occasion drop arrows. After no more spawn, you want to take out your bow and arrow. I said your bow and arrow, not the bellows, and aim directly for the eye. If you miss the eye or you take too long, it's going to start slamming down at the ship at you. When its arm is down, is a much easier opportunity for you to shoot at the eye. 
Also, good information to know, you do not need to wait till it's fully pulled back. You want to run as close to the edge of the ship as possible, and that's going to be your opportunity to strike the eye several times. So, tentacles are going to be popping up everywhere. You want to chop them all off. If they drop arrows and you need arrows, collect the arrows. This is the way that we want to face. Take out your bow and arrow. Nope, I was wrong. It was left. Oh, Gyro was way off on that one. Thanks, thanks, Joy-Cons. Got it. Oh, no, don't jump in the water. You just want to get close to the edge of the ship. No, 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 no. Yes, I still got in there. I think I got max hits. Okay, opposite of where it is now, it's gonna be on that side. Fairly certain. Like a good, like, 65% sure. We're gonna, we're gonna start these up. There we go, great. Also, the reason that we got a bigger quiver is because uh, right now we'd be out. I'm wrong again, aren't I? Yep, wrong again. Okay, it was the back of the ship again. Oh, but that was some nice timing right there. Okay, and there's the giant eye. Great, fantastic. We finished phase one. Ursula is going to be super upset. Going to hit the boat, knock away parts of the boat. That box is going to fall down. Donkey Kong is going to be back, throwing barrels at us. You have to climb up and to the top of the ship. Here, Tentalis is going to appear again. Here's a pro tip. As soon as she shows up, it shows up, you can shoot her right in the eye. Nice. Get very close. Chop up a storm. Now we're going to run to the opposite end of this top deck here. Right? Face Tentalis, whip out your sword, and start chopping left and right. Its hair is going to turn into snakes, like Medusa. And if you just chop left and right the whole time, you're going to be fine. After that's done, it's going to open its eye up, shoot its eye. And this is going to be the last time you need to hit the eye for the fight to be complete. GG. Once you do the uh, the boss rush, this is one of the fights that I do that I usually don't lose any hearts on. So it's a pretty easy one to not get hit in. There's a full heart container for us. The storm has passed. As you can see, it's currently like chopped in half and there's stuff everywhere. Oh, and there we go. There's the goddess crest. Nice, 17 hearts. Skyward strike. <laughs> GG. A giant blue flame appears. We hold up our sword. Same deal as last time. P is going to land back down to the ground. With the sword being presented, she is going to take fire upon it. Or... Yeah, yeah, she took fire upon the sword. That works. And now our sword has changed form yet again. Boom. The flames of Nehru have transformed your blade, expanding Fee's power. She can now help you douse for more objects. Best upgrade ever. I'm just more excited that our sword is definitely less green looking and definitely more like, you know, like teal looking. Link looks at his hand. <sighs> That's the Triforce of Wisdom. That's the Zelda one. And Fee's gonna be like, with your sword enhanced, you can learn a new melody. I recommend we return to the Isle of Songs. So much personality. And Skipper says he's going to fix the ship and come back and visit. Okay, thanks, no problem. And we're at the pier. Awesome. And fantastic, that's going to complete this episode of Skyward Sword. 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John Place. If you've enjoyed the video or you found it helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.